special asbestos in a long-term manufacturer that you're starting to see that life cycle. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty important to know here. I mean, we, we started talking about this, I believe, back in February, the first time we approached, you know, system of the judge and uh, about all this. It's kind of been a pretty long process to get to, get to this step. So, and even before before this concept was come up for the refire, they, I mean, they probably, the valuation right now may be a few million dollars in project for 2019. And it was probably thought that it would probably shut down with the refire. So. Before the purchase. Yes. Okay. And it's important to note also that Clipper is out of business to manufacture the original okay. purchase. So. And the proposed new ones are built by who? Vestas. Vestas. Okay, so if, if we go, what is the next page is about the actual evaluation? Okay. Yes, and it was there together. I think we just about this last time with the schedule. And um, looking at your guidelines and criteria based on just a regular abatement by the point system, you know, it, it's, it's about 48% abatement is what it comes out to either way. But what we proposed is, you know, a, basically 100% of money with a pilot payment. So it's what that does for, for the county, if it enters that abatement, it does get you approximately $28,000 the first two years instead of zero and zero. With the pilot? Yes, sir. And that's payment in lieu of taxes? Yes, sir. Okay, we might have done that. We've talked about this several times. But we've never done a pilot in Eastman County. In fact, we've only done three tax abatements that I'm aware of. One came in before I came on in 2007, and then this one, and one more. And generally, in the past, well, I've been working on this since 2006, 7, but in the past few years, the pilot is the way that most counties and hospital districts and colleges, when they abate property, they go that way. So the end result from what you're proposing here, whether you go with the pilot or without the pilot, the bottom line is real close. Yes, sir. The so pilot we'll is just a guarantee. I'm sorry. The pilot is just a guarantee. So what happens if you don't get the abatement? If you don't get the abatement, I mean, in this case, it's, it's probably going to be required anyway. But also, I will also tell you, the income approach is, you know, used in value in the wind turbines, you do a cost and income approach, and, you know, any more money that you, you take out of your income, you know, it's going to take out the income approach. So, it would, you know, it can result in a little bit more valuation. You're saying the valuation of the project could be less on the appraisal because you're using the income approach to do the valuation. They do, yes, sir. I think you know, one of the benefits for both the county and the project is it's a fixed uh, payment structure. So one, we can budget for it and go into the, the year knowing what the payments are. Uh, and it sustains that fixed payment for the county and for at least for the community. And what, what, are, five years, I guess. what you're asking for is a five year abatement. Yes, sir. The three abatements we've done before were ten year abatements as I recall. Where all the y'all y'all purchased in nineteen, right? Eighteen, nineteen? Eighteen. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Um were all these basically in the same condition then as they are now? I mean did you know what you were buying? I yes. guess is what I'm asking. Right. The condition has continued to degrade, right. but the repowers is what made them viable. Right. <coughs> Once the uh, equipment is put back into workable condition, it will still be operating at something close to 100%. 
as it was back in 2008 when it was built. You're just here today, and you've been here in the past to ask if the county wants to grant an abatement, either in the form of a straight abatement or an abatement with the pilot payout. That's basically what you're here for today. Okay. okay. We've had some delays with the COVID situation and all that, so we need to make some kind of decision today, then all of us do, about what we're going to do. Well, of course, we've got we've got a whole group of people here that want to talk. Has anybody filled out a public participation form if you want to talk? We've got some back there in the back if you want to fill one out. Okay. My 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 deal is is you know what you bought and you got it. Uh, same way as if one of us bought something. It's it's an investment. We've done and baited it for ten years on this, and you're not part of the selling point in the beginning for. And I know y'all weren't there. Was the three phase deal? We're going to do this, this, this. When they done one, stop. Okay. They they run the abatement completely out and then sell to y'all, which puts you at the end of everything, and but you know what you're buying. I have a hard time giving another five years when you know what you were buying and we've already done it once and nobody's going through with the other two phases of the project that was promised. That's that's my two cents. I mean, I understand that financially it, it makes sense, but I just don't know that we or I can go with adding more to a project that's not even going forward with the other two phases that they promised me. And like I said, I know when y'all sure. at the end of get go with this to sell it as give us this, and then don't do anything else. And I understand that back then and, and even today. Natural gas is cheaper to make electricity. I understand all that. But you're not putting anything else on the table other than what already exists, and we've already abated it for 10 years. And that, and that's my, my thought. Which my would be something thought. different if we had new construction coming in. Correct. If, if the Increasing other two the facets were a lot more. coming up, I, I mean, I can understand that. But when you're just, if, if, if you go buy a motorcycle and it breaks down when you drive off the parking lot, it's on you, you know, unless you get a warranty. So you know what you buy, you kind of stuck with what you get. So that's my two Okay, any other commissioners? Okay. All right, anybody else? Commissioner Wilson? No, I'm just not around. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Crenshaw? No, I don't. I, I know what I'm <laughs> All right. Then let me open this up to discussion. And these are just in the order that I've been handed. So the first up is Robin Hayes. And Ms. Hayes, I'm not sure where you are. Oh, there you are. Okay. And you want to discuss this item, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I just want to go on record saying that I am not for an abatement at all for them um, because um, I believe that they don't um, make money. I believe that the reason they still exist is because of um, federal, state, county, and um, city tax abatements. And, oh, sorry. Thank you. and um, anyway, I just think that um, my husband and I have four companies and over several counties, and we never get um, tax abatements. And we pay hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxes each year. And um, I think that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. All right, that takes us to the next one. Uh, Ruth York. Ms. York, where are you? There you are. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, and, and thank you for allowing me to speak. I wanted just to mention that we're aware that we, this generation, I guess, is leaving a massive debt to our children. I would hate to think that we're going to leave them a broken view, a diminished land value. So I think those are things that we need to consider carefully in considering this issue. Okay, thank you. And next up is Johnny Irby. Mr. Irby. Again, appreciate it. Um, I've got several questions, really. And this is not a 
personal attack on these gentlemen. Uh, I don't know them. Probably great men. So none, none of these things are a personal attack. But really, my understanding from what I've done, from the research I've done, is that really this repowering is so they can get back into uh, another 10-year cycle of what's called the PTC. Are y'all familiar with what that is? I don't know what the PTC is. PTC is production tax credit, which each of these uh, wind farms get. What it is is a government subsidy for each kilowatt hour of, the, of power they produce. So that's really what this is all about. Did that continue? It, I thought that was supposed to stop. I can address that. Okay. So a production tax credit, basically, the project may or may not have those production tax credits. They have investors that can come in and invest in this project. So it's not a government, it's not government giving anybody money. Whatever who this investor is or this company can come in and they can write off their taxes, off their income bottom line. Okay, so if this project, if it fell short of the production, that money actually comes out of that project to pay these investors if it falls short of production, what they're guaranteeing these investors with the production tax credits. Okay. So it's not government really handing out any money. That's the government saying they're not going to take a certain amount of money, which I don't know what, how you... That, that could be from a John Deere, uh, Ikea, whomever that would would invest in a project. It's not just one tire. Pardon me? It's not just one tire. You said it's John Deere. Well, every, every well, yeah. investor would come in. Yeah, okay. whoever put money into the yes. project. They can rock that. Okay, okay. sure. But I, I, Go ahead, I say that's a fine line between the government giving you money and then the government saying, well, we, we sh should be owed this money, but we're not going to take it for this reason. So I don't know how you want to draw that line. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's tax money they, I would say, should have paid in that they don't have to pay in. Okay. Uh, now, I noticed that uh, this was, uh, this repowering project was going to be uh, headed up by a French company, correct? EDF. Yeah. No, he says no. no he, EDF is just the balance of plant manufacturer uh, manager. Okay. Well, it sounded like they were going to contract with a, a company called uh, Phoenix Repow. So Phoenix Wind is the entity that the new buyer created when they purchased three assets from BP. When they bought it from BP. British Petroleum was the original uh, owner of the project. So when, when Harry's bought it, Phoenix Wind was the entity, and EDF is just a on-site asset manager. Okay. So, so who's actually going to do the work? Well, it's, it's a combination. Vestas is the uh, equipment manufacturer, and then we have subcontractors actually installing it, and multiple different parties that are part of the uh, construction company. So, so what I'm getting at is, is, does this thing, does it offer any new jobs for Eastland County? The amount of long-term staff will be the same at the plant that's dedicated to the plant, but this uh, long-term support maintenance agreement that's in place will be traveling construction crews that come in okay. so they will have to you know, reside locally for certain periods of time and, and there's six month maintenance cycles so they will be here anywhere from two to three weeks you know, scheduled duration twice a year and if there's any issues that come up they will address those and, and bring in additional crews so the, the construction count will probably be it's going to be 80 to 90 people for several months so there's increased cash flow to the county just with the number of personnel and equipment that's brought on site. The permanent jobs are about the same as what they are currently or when this was started. Correct. Okay. Okay. Retaining the jobs. Okay. 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 Okay
Okay. So we're not really talking about a whole lot that way. Transient, transient word. Um, and by the way, this is this is what you're looking at for this Roadrunner project too. The same kind of same kind of setup. So I know these guys aren't involved in that, but you're looking at transient work mostly, and and they they commit to three permanent jobs. <clears throat> um, now, did 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 this uh, in the life of this project? Did it uh, qualify for the? Uh, uh, it's called PERPA arrangement. Y'all familiar with it? it uh, not not the one facility now. Um, that that PERPA. What is it? Um, Public Utilities Regulator Regulatory Practices Act. It was a. Uh, it's set up where a <clears throat> small wind farm, uh, basically a power company, was forced to buy power from them, whether whether it was uh, needed or not. Now I don't know if this project engaged in that or not. That's another one of those little uh, give me things that are out there for the wind industry. Okay. With all those things uh, put together, those are my main questions. Uh, my recommendation is like Mr. Rains is uh, let's not extend it. Uh, I, I, I really think that this is just, they don't really need this. It's just a handout if you're willing to give it to them. Uh, I say enough's enough. Don't do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Irving. Okay, next up is, uh, I think that says Walker, Walker York. Yes, sir. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Commissioners, for, for uh, allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Walker York. I live in Cisco. I was born on Fifth Street, and uh, I've been uh, in this county longer than I've been breathing my own air. So I love this county, and I want to see it prosper. So that's why we're all here today. And I want to start off by saying my house is 100% solar powered. And so I say that to tell you that none of this is against alternative energy. I am for alternative energy when it makes sense, when it's reliable, when it's consistent. And, and wind farms, in my mind, aren't reliable, they're not consistent, and they're not productive for society. And so I would encourage our commissioner's court to not do this abatement. The commissioner over here has uh, asked if, if we don't do the abatement, are they still going to do it? And they're still going to do it. They're, they have some in this county on the far edge, and I think that's where they're already there, so they can stay, obviously. But I don't think we should help them. I think we should make a statement, and I would encourage you to make a statement, that says y'all are here, but we don't like y'all being here. And hopefully that's a statement that can echo through these walls into the other wind turbine companies that are thinking about in the future to let them know that Eastland County isn't something we want to hassle with. So thank you for your time and consideration and uh, hope you make a great choice. Thank you, Next up we have Jerry Master. Well, I thank you guys for saying you better than me. I like your words, Walker, I like your words. They're here, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't. Eastland County doesn't want them here or any more here. And I do not believe they should be abated. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Ferris Wilkes. Yes, thank you all for letting us, let all of us say what we want to say. You know, the only reason town, city, states, or federal governments give rebates or tax payments is that the company receives company that is receiving that abatement brings something to the table that's already not here. And obviously these, this company does not have anything other than what they've already brought. And uh, so there's no reason for abatement. Also these windmills were represented to be 30 year machines. And now 12 years, 13 years into it, uh, you know, they're back wanting some more help. 
So, uh, you know, we pay our taxes. I think they ought to pay their taxes. I just ask everyone to Google bad wind farms and see what dishonest bunch of foreign companies, what they do with U.S. subsidies. At the last meeting, someone asked, I believe these same two individuals, if they would continue even if they didn't get an payment. And they said they would. So it makes no sense at all to give them an payment. And uh, wind mills don't run on wind, they run on subsidies. Yeah. Also, windmills reduce your property values by 20 to 40%. And how close to them you are. And uh, according to a survey, eight out of ten people looking for land said they would not buy land next to a wind farm. So if you have land, your property value is going to go down. So we need to look down the road and think about some of the other projects that are trying to come to our county. And so the county should be concerned also about the diminishing tax values for your own tax purposes because y'all tax off the land value as well. And so I would ask us to send a strong message to these companies that we don't want wind farms in our county. You know, you go out toward uh, Sweetwater, Roscoe, you see what a mess they've got on their hands out there. I mean, it's a colossal mess. So uh, then you go down to Fredericksburg, and they've preserved their pristine landscape where they have hills and valleys that you can actually see the hills and valleys. Do we want to be a Sweetwater or do we want to be a Fredericksburg? We need to make up our mind which way we want to be. So I know this is not always an easy task that y'all have been given as commissioners and as a judge. And I certainly appreciate the fact that y'all are in a tight spot sometime to make decisions that would be good for everybody. But I would also ask that just let's consider our future yeah. and not just today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to uh, Ham Gully. Mr. Gully, there you are. Yes, sir. I didn't know if I want to speak or not, but I think I will. Here. Up, up to you. Uh, you know, I know a whole lot about these wind farms things because I audit schools and city hall across the state. Um, have dealt with schools that have been represented by, by this company right here in the past. And uh, just as Mr. Wilkes said, uh, 312 agreement, which, which is what y'all would have, not a 313 agreement. Uh, that's how these companies survive, is off of these abatements. And in this one in particular, you can fly over it. I fly over it all the time, and I'm traveling here, there, and yonder in our plane. And you can look down at these windmills, and they are an eyesore, not because they're standing there so much, but, but because they're broken down. And that is the big issue here is we as tax paying entities generically have been promised that they will be upkept, that they will be maintained, that they will be productive for long lived purposes. And yet they don't even last 10 years. And you can look down at the ones that are there, as they've already said, 20% of them are operational. And um, when you look at the original abatements, they were promised to last 30 years. And they don't even last a third of that time because, because of one, the manufacturing process at the time has uh, obviously proven not to be effective. And two, uh, they're basically worthless after 10 years time. And so they have to come back to y'all as they're doing today and say we want another abatement to get them back to where they're operational again. And how many times will, that, will they come back to the trough and say, we need more, we need more, we need more, because it's not doing what was promised. 
And what's the end result to the county? What's the end result to us as taxpayers? Well, new construction won't affect the rollback rates as they currently exist. But we're not talking about new construction. We're talking about revamping existing construction, which will affect the impact on the, ta the taxability of the county to raise local taxes if need be. As a result of what we're in now, COVID-19, we don't know what loss in revenue the county or the schools or the cities are going to really see because of the decline in our overall economic situation. And so with this repower, we're talking about adding value to existing roles that could impact your ability to raise taxes as necessary just back to, to the effective or rollback rate. The pilot money that they have proposed, if y'all do choose to accept it, will not be subject to the taxation or the rollback effect. And so if y'all do approve it, definitely take the pilot program because that will be beneficial to the county because that will not affect your taxability. The bottom line is we're, ta I'm, we're talking about a much bigger scheme and scale of more than just this project. We're talking about the one that's going in Cisco. We're talking about this one that's in the south. We've got multiple projects that are in the pipeline that are trying to come online. Is this really what we want our county to become? As has been said, we want us to become a Sweetwater, or we want us to be a Fredericksburg. And I, as a landowner, as a taxpayer, do not want us to become a Sweetwater, Texas. I want us to become the pristine county that we are, and the few windmills that we have in the south part of the county, you know, they're there. They're not going to go away, and we can't take them down. But please, let's not get in the way. And that's what I've got to say. Thank you all. Thank you. somebody that now they've heard something they want to say something else okay there's nothing then uh, commissioners is there a motion to or commissioners have any comments or anything any other questions for any since we all have a I'll say okay we've got a motion and a second to not give the abatement and now let's we're talking about the uh, tax abatement for Silver Star Wind Farm Repower Project, uh, presented by Mike Fry and Matt Wolski. 
because we're going to have some more of these come up, I feel quite sure. We've got uh, a motion and a second to not grant the abatement. What is that? I think it's, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I think it's just to move forward in the process because you have those 30 days public notice for the vote whether to grant one or not. Or to not grant one? What I'm, what I'm saying is, I believe you couldn't vote on it today because you have to have a 30 day public notice. Well, it was so long ago. Just to move forward. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. But the inclination is that we don't want to grant the tax abatement. Correct. Okay. So we have to post a notice on that. No, sir, not, not now. No, no. If, if, if it, in other words, if... I thought that was only if we, if we granted the abatement. No, sir. That's okay. the period, basically. Okay. Okay. So this was kind of just to move forward in the process, I guess. So, Mr. Maxwell, is your motion to not move forward on any tax abatement with this uh, Silver Star win on okay. And still the same, same. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye, aye as well. Okay. Well, that, that's good because it's been, <laughs> and this was actually in process as I came on board in 2007. So, it's been a lot of. Well, what last year. Oh, it's changed. They changed. Ah, the that's way one. Things okay. Have been done. So you got to post 30 days public notice before you even vote. Yes or no on it. Okay. Button. Is it 30 days from the date that we decided to move forward, which is today? Not we're not going to be posted. Okay. To the meeting. Okay. So we'll post <coughs> it. But we don't have to now, so. Uh, okay. So we'll just have it again in another 30 away. days. So. Well, no, it's going away. I mean, we're not. Um, excuse me, but why can't you tell him what you're going to do and well, not him tell you? Well, well, he's actually a tax consultant. He doesn't work. He's not an employee of the company. He's a tax consultant. He used to be in county government as an appraiser years ago, and the rules have changed on this since 2008. <coughs> so we're not moving forward with the, with anything else. It's just it's dead. It's dead. Yes. So it's. We don't intend to bring it back up oh, for this project. Now, I'm sure that it'll come up again when we have more projects that come up. But for this project, then, it's it's over. Is that your understanding of the new rules? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Well, my, my point was, without posting the 30-day notice, you couldn't vote on an agreement today anyway. Couldn't take action. You, you couldn't give it or not. That's correct. Right. That's correct. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Then, anything else? Uh, Mr. Wolski, Mr. Fry. Sure, thank you all very much for being here. All right, and thank you. Okay, that takes care of item number two. And item number three is to discuss consider acceptance of Stratus by Global Data Technologies, quote, for VOIP telephone service and new phones. Pete, you're um, part of it. <coughs> We have discussed this before that the current Plexar system is going to be no longer serviced in the future. And during those discussions, uh, Thomas Baker with Stratus um, suggested that we start the process in my office. Um, so this is starting the process. Um, this is going to the voiceover internet I believe it's protocol. Um, and for five new phones. And I do have budget in my budget to pay for these phones under office equipment. These are for phones in your office. Yes, sir. Okay. And let me uh, talk about the cost. Uh, the cost of these lines is going to be $20 per month per line. Um, and currently on the Plexar system, we're paying about $17.50 per line. But when you go to the VOIP, there's no longer internet service. Uh, there's internet service. You don't pay for internet service any longer. So there'll be an additional cost savings on uh, long distance. So we won't be paying long distance phone calls. Right. So basically, this is our test. And so my question is, because I have 
have customers that have the VOIP and the reception is horrible. We have it here in Eastman County. We can't hear them, so we end up talking on cell phones. Okay, and we'll find that out, Kathy. Okay. But we have fiber optic mm -hmm. internet, dedicated fiber optic to the courthouse. So with the sheriff's office going on their own dedicated and fiber. And when is that going to happen? Well, any time now. <laughs> okay. uh, if, if, <laughs> yes, if we could actually communicate with AT&T instead of an automated call, um, it would happen very quickly because they're ready to they're ready to go, and their lines are also going to be switched to the the VOIP. Yeah. Yeah. So, my, it, will it pull on our once the sheriff's office goes on to theirs and you get yours up running? Mm -hmm. Is it going to take away from our regular internet? Because well, we can't go any less. Well, and once the sheriff's office goes on their own, you're going to see you're going to see ours is faster. That's going to free it up because right, right now they're shooting it across with the broadband right. and that wireless bridge. Because right. we, well, I mean, like I said, we can't go backwards. Mm -hmm. It's horrible as it is. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, you're right, we can't go backwards. So we can't go back to a landline phone like used to with an operator. We have the, the Plexar system now, which is now getting antiquated. So the next step is the VOIP. So, is this, when is our other offices projected on moving? Um, and that's a deci decision of the court. I just went ahead because my phones are horrible. I cannot even afford to call in the courthouse. I agree. So, I was about <laughs> to buy new phones anyway. Okay. So, to me, since we were going to kind of test one office and then start moving all the other offices, it was a good time to start the process. And when you get up and running, will we be able to communicate with your office? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Your phone system. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions or comments on this proposal for uh, acceptance of stratus for VOIP in the office? Okay. You need to sign this. Okay. You got to have a motion and a second, I think. Motion. All right, we've got a motion. We have a second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We oppose the same sign, and that carries. Is that to execute and allow? Yes, ma'am. You, sir. Is to item number four, which is annual road reports to be presented to the court. And we should have a road report from all four commissioners. And then later I will take those to the uh, grand jury. Uh, Kathy, do you have a report for all precincts? Okay, precinct one, two, three, and four. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions or comments on any of these annual road reports? This is this something we have to do? And the, uh, I've got to get it presented by what, the ninth month of the fiscal year? I don't remember what the grand jury deal is. It's the, it says six months of the year we have to present before. Okay. Uh, but I think it says the next available grand jury that's, or that's something what I'm like trying that. To do it, so. Yeah. Okay. So can we have a motion then to accept those four annual road reports 
delivered today and uh, attested to uh, from each commissioner. Motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. And that gets it. And then finally, number five is accounts payable. Yes. Well, we there are six sets. The first one is June 26th. That was payables. Uh, the 24th was employee reimbursement and bills that were due before court. The next one is June 26th payroll, all payables other than workers' comp and unemployment. Then June 26th payroll gross wages. June 29th workers' comp and unemployment for the quarter. July 6th, those are regular payables for today. <clears throat> and I believe I flagged everybody's page 11. Um, that is the JP uh, Justice Court Technology budget and um, local government code requires that these expenditures be approved before payment is approved. And it's for biz protect for equipment and labor. And then the last one is July 6th, health reimbursement arrangement for an employee. Okay, do you have any questions or comments on any of these sets of bills to be paid today? Okay, can we have a motion in to pay those bills and claims and accounts and to include and approve payment for just support technology fund? Awesome. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. And opposed, same sign. And that's sure. Okay, Takes us through the end of the meeting uh, with nothing else on the agenda. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Yes, sir. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same time.